Hello everybody! This is how I made a Vampire Survivors clone in Unreal and Godot. Which engine is better suited for 2D games? Let's find out, shall we? Let's start with Unreal. First I have to separate the sprite sheet into individual sprites. In Unreal it's pretty easy. Just right click, extract sprite and I'm done. Now I can assign the separated sprites into an animation. Let's go to the player, shall we? In the player controller I use a weird node setup to assign the walk and idle animation. I also flip the sprite on the x-axis when I move right. For the weapon hit detection I use a box trace. A box trace spawns a collider and gives information back what's in the box. In one simple note. I load the player data from a spreadsheet so I can easily modify the values. I add a add experience and take damage function. I also add a magnet to collect nearby items, again with a sphere trace. I have a health component, this acts like a contract every time I take damage. It first asks if I have a health component, if true, I take damage. In Godot, first I have to separate the sprite sheet into individual sprites. Let's do this first. Click select sprite and save. Duplicate, rename, wait, select. Duplicate, rename, wait, select, 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 select. <laughs> That's pain. Should I show you pain? Should I? I changed the player to an anthropomorphic dog because I thought that is super scary. Just imagine if you see something like this running towards you. The player node setup is like follow. I have a navigation obstacle, so I can push around enemies. The weapon node which holds all my weapons, a states node for my buff and debuffs, and a stats node for some of my stats that needs a smart contract, so I can do the exact same thing than before in Unreal. The player controller. Nothing really to talk about, just a normal player controller. Uh, I guess I get the stats from a spreadsheet so it's easy to mod. Then I convert the CSV file to a resource for easy access. The health node manages health and damage calculations. And the experience node calculates the experience, duh. For the enemy I separate out the sprite and assign it to a flipbook. I activate RVO avoidance system. I assign spreadsheet based stats to the enemy. On death I spawn an experience crystal scene and do other stuff. For damage calculations I check if the player is touching the enemy. I start a timer which deals damage periodically. Because you can't add the player into the RVO avoidance system, when the player is near the enemy I have to manually push the enemy out of the way when the player is near the enemy. The enemy spawner, you know what that means. It's spaghetti time. I don't even try to explain that mess. <laughs> Let's just make a diagram instead. I get the screen length and width and calculate the screen border into in-game units. From there I have a buffer zone where I spawn enemies at random points. As an extra parameter I check if a zone is walkable so I can't spawn outside the map or on top of objects. At this point I gave up with Unreal because the performance wasn't great and I didn't even implement projectiles yet. In Godot the enemy scene is pretty much the same as the player pawn, except the enemy has a navigation agent to denote, so it can navigate to the player. It also has a knockback timer, so I can add a knockback force over a brief moment of time. The enemy has also a drop node which deals with all the drops percentages. Now with less spaghetti, I can explain the enemy spawner. I calculate the screen borders and get random points. Because I set window mode to keep aspect ratio, I don't have to do weird calculations to keep the borders. I spawn enemies in waves and also per tick, but just if my current enemy count is smaller than my max enemy count. I declare all those values in a CSV file. How do my weapons work? Every weapon has different resources for velocity, spawn behavior, on-hit effects and stats. 
For example, I can give a normal weapon an on-hit effect, which spawns another weapon. This weapon spawns also weapons, and those weapons spawns another weapon. Well, the projectile spawner gets the base stats also from a CSV file, and I also store them into a resource. Projectiles just have a sprite, nothing else. All the collision calculations is done via casting. It's more efficient this way rather than using a area to denote. What? What is that? Why? 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 Who wants to do all of this? Just to get a simple cast. Now for every project I have to either remember all of this or save it somewhere and copy the code. <sighs> so much overhead for normally such a simple task. Pretty much every game engine I know has some sort of a simple trace. <sighs> and yeah, I also know that game engines have different weird kinks sometimes, but 99% of games need some sort of a trace. Why is that so backwards? Huh? I also created an in-game weapon creator. Every projectile uses the same weapon, just with different resources. But I scrapped that, because I'm not done with the projectile spawner and I don't want to rewrite the whole system. Events. I have also random events during the game, like collect potatoes or kill spooky skeletons at the graveyard. The boss has the same setup as a normal enemy, except I use a resource to initiate different attack patterns randomly with random timers. And that's where I'm at. Unreal Engine is good for big 3D open world games, but it's not the greatest choice for small 2D projects. On the other hand, Godot is still not a feature complete game engine. Heck, this was just possible because of the last update, which implemented the RVO avoidance system, otherwise this wouldn't have worked at all. Even there were some avoidance plugins out there, they started chugging pretty hard at like 80 actors. So the future looks better and better for Godot. At some point, it actually becomes a real game engine. Well, see you next time when I either do this or I dive into the music of Subnautica. Please share and like the video. That's pain! For every 10 likes, I eat one raw egg.